So, Easter Island. You've heard the story, right? Classic cautionary tale. People show up, destroy all the trees, society collapses, everyone starves. We've been teaching this for like 50 years. Turns out, it's mostly wrong. New tech, drones, dating methods, physics modeling, just blew up five major myths about the place. And honestly, the real story is way more interesting. Stick around, because what we've been teaching in climate discussions and classrooms, yeah, we got it backwards. Welcome to Amazing Earth. Okay, how do you move an 80-ton stone statue for miles? No wheels, no machines, Stone Age tools. For decades, the answer seemed obvious. Palm tree logs as rollers. You'd need thousands of trees, hundreds of people per statue. Jared Diamond wrote about this in Collapse. It became the standard explanation. Teachers taught it, climate experts quoted it. But hang on, does that make sense? Would the Rapa Nui people really keep cutting down their trees, the same trees giving them food, shelter, canoes, generation after generation, watching the damage pile up but just never stopping? That doesn't match how actual humans behave, right? Here's what they actually did. Physics. The statues have this D-shaped bottom, and they lean forward. When they're lying flat, they're unstable. But standing up, they balance perfectly to rock side to side. Scientists built a replica, 4.35 tons, and 18 people with three ropes walked it 328 feet in 40 minutes. No logs, no massive workforce, just clever design. For centuries, Rapa Nui oral tradition said the statues walked. Scientists thought this was mythology. Nope, it was the actual instruction manual. And here's the thing. If you don't need armies of workers dragging logs, you probably don't need a powerful king organizing everything. Which brings us to the next myth. When drones mapped the quarry in 2019, they found something the old story can't explain. A thousand hand-carved statues? That sounds like it needs serious top-down control. Makes sense. That's how our big projects work. Pyramids, Stonehenge, medieval cathedrals, all built with centralized power. But the drone data told a different story. Scientists created the first complete 3D model of Rano Raraku Quarry. Instead of one coordinated mega project, they found about 30 separate workshops scattered across the site. Each had its own tools, unfinished statues, distinct techniques. That's not what centralized control looks like. This is family groups, different clans, each working independently. They shared the same spiritual vision, honoring ancestors, but every community was carving their own monuments, showing off their skills. Less ancient Egypt, more like medieval European towns competing to build the tallest cathedral spire. So no brutal dictator, people cooperating instead of being forced. Then what caused the population crash Europeans found? The traditional answer is the darkest part of the story. Also, the most wrong. The collapse narrative goes, after the last palm fell, everything went to hell. No wood equals no canoes equals no fishing. Crops failed. People turned on each other. Warfare, toppled statues, maybe even cannibalism. Dutch explorers in 1722 found only about 3,000 people living in ruins. This story is everywhere. TED Talks, economics textbooks, government climate hearings. Easter Island as the ultimate warning. Ignore environmental limits and your civilization eats itself. But here's what should make you suspicious. This story is too neat. Real history is messy, contradictory, weird. This reads like a fable with a moral already written. When a story aligns this perfectly with what we want to believe today, you should ask, are we looking at evidence or confirmation bias? The actual science paints something different. Dating methods show the population grew steadily after people arrived around 1200 AD, peaked somewhere around 15,000, then stayed stable for centuries until Europeans showed up. No evidence of mass starvation or societal collapse before 1722. Yeah, the forests disappeared. 
But here's what happened. Rats. The Polynesians brought rats with them, accidentally, as food. Doesn't matter. These rats found paradise. No predators, unlimited palm nuts, perfect climate. Population exploded into millions within years. Palm nuts are rat candy, as one researcher put it. They ate seeds faster than trees could regrow. Meanwhile, humans cleared land for sweet potato farming. Combination of the two equals deforestation. But the Rapa Nui didn't collapse. They adapted, built these extensive rock gardens covering thousands of acres, rocks protecting topsoil, holding moisture, releasing minerals, kept agriculture productive for generations. The real collapse? Europeans. European ships brought smallpox and tuberculosis. Then, in the 1860s, this part is brutal. Peruvian slavers kidnapped over 1,400 people, roughly half the remaining population. When a few survivors were returned, they brought smallpox with them. By 1870, only 111 people remained. The tragedy wasn't self-destruction. It was colonialism came in 2024, when scientists stated something that, according to the old theory, shouldn't even exist. Museums around the world have these wooden tablets covered in Rongo Rongo script, symbols, figures, arranged in precise rows. No one alive can read it. For years, scholarly consensus was clear, invented after 1722, inspired by seeing European writing. The logic seems solid, Independent invention of writing is incredibly rare. In 200,000 years of human history, it happened maybe five times. Mesopotamia, Egypt, China, Mesoamerica, possibly the Indus Valley. Think about the odds here. Easter Island, 3,000 to 15,000 people, totally isolated, 2,000 miles from the nearest anything. The chance they'd invent writing independently? like buying five lottery tickets in all of human history and hitting jackpot on all five. So when Europeans arrived with documents in 1770, scholars had an easy explanation, cultural borrowing. They saw writing, got inspired, created their own symbols. Every textbook agreed, made perfect sense. Then 2024 happened. Scientists radiocarbon dated several tablets. Most came back 1700s to 1800s, as expected. But one tablet shocked everyone. The wood was cut between 1493 and 1509, over 200 years before any European set foot on the island. Now, scientists are cautious about this. The dating shows when the tree died, not necessarily when someone carved it. But wood degrades fast in tropical climates. Using ancient, degraded wood for something this important seems unlikely. The simplest explanation? Rongo Rongo represents one of history's rarest achievements, true, independent writing invention. The symbols look nothing like European letters. The reading direction is unique, switches left-right and right-left, flipping symbols on each line. This isolated island created a complex writing system we still can't fully read. Which brings us to the final myth, and it reveals the hidden logic behind where every statue was placed. Hundreds of moai line the coast on platforms called ahu. For 150 years, experts said these marked territories, basically ancient property lines. Makes sense, right? That's what boundary markers do. Except the pattern made no sense. Territory markers usually go near valuable stuff. Good farmland, fishing spots, defensible positions. Standard across human cultures. But Ahu locations had no connection to farming areas. Some sat in barren spots with terrible soil. Others had zero tactical advantage. A few faced inward instead of toward the ocean. Experts labeled them ceremonial, which is basically what we say when we don't understand something. Then in 2019, scientists mapped every major Ahu location and cross-referenced it with something overlooked for years, water sources. Easter Island has almost no surface streams. Rainwater drains straight through the porous volcanic rock. 
ancient islanders relied on coastal seeps, rare spots where groundwater emerges, critical for survival. The study found a direct correlation. Ahu platforms sit near freshwater sources. The statues weren't just spiritual guardians. They were practical signposts marking the island's most precious resource. Rapa Nui culture didn't separate the spiritual from the practical. The statues honored ancestors and guided people to water at the same time. That's not collapse. That's smart adaptation to one of Earth's harshest inhabited places. For 50 years, we believed Easter Island's story because we didn't have the right tools to look closer. Drones found the workshops. Dating methods shattered timelines. Physics proved the statues walked. Makes you wonder, what other confirmed historical facts are wrong because we haven't looked with better technology yet? Ready to uncover more secrets? Pick the discovery that calls to you.